Well, good morning, everybody. This is Linda from North Central Texas. And you know, I got to thinking. I said, what was I doing planting my uh, cabbage or that cabbage bottom in that little small tote? Now, it may work, but it might tip over if the cabbage gets very big. So what I'm going to do, I've got a bigger pot out in the yard. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get some of this compost because I don't have any in the bucket. Let me see what you're seeing over here. Yeah, you should be able to see that. But I'm going to get some of my compost out of here. And it hasn't completely broken down yet, but that's all right. It'll finish breaking down in the pot. But cabbages need a lot of good organic matter to grow. So that's what this is, organic matter. <laughs> And that should be enough. Because if my cabbages grow like everybody claims they're going to grow, you know, like producing me four, at least three or four cabbages, then I need to... Um, let me get my shovel because I'm going to need my shovel to dig into that big pot. And I'm going to need paper. So I'm going to go in the house and get uh, some cardboard or some toilet rolls and stuff like that out of my trash can. Yeah, but I think I'm going to put it in this pot because, as you can see, it's kind of deep. And uh, no matter how big that cabbage gets, that pot's not going to turn over. There's no way that pot will turn over because it's half buried in the ground. And I've been planting my okra here, but I'm going to put my cabbage here this year. And it's supposed to be out in the sun, so... Hopefully this will work. So, let me go get my paper. And I didn't unlock my back door, so I've got to go around the house. <laughs> See, that's the good thing about the Chinese cabbage. It doesn't head up like our regular green cabbage that we know. It just grows, and it puts out tons of leaves, and it puts out little... uh almost like a broccoli looking thing at the top and it does produce flowers but you can eat the flowers so what you do is just break the basically the top of it off like this one you know you break it about halfway down or more and the leaves and the stem will grow back so that's why i don't mind putting those in a smaller pot see like that's a chinese cabbage and wherever you break it off usually it, it comes out with two or three more limbs on it like that one did because I broke it out about halfway down and it started putting out different shoots but you just break it off you eat stems and all so it's pretty good anyway let's go get our paper rolls <laughs> and the sun I don't know it doesn't look like the sun's coming out today we're supposed to get rain. In fact, I figured it would have been raining already. But it's not, so we'll see. I haven't checked the radar. So I'm not sure how or what time we're supposed to get our rain. <laughs> and it's early for me in the morning. I mean, <laughs> I haven't been long up, gotten up. I've not had my coffee yet. <laughs> but I said, I got to thinking about it, and I said, you know, 
that little pot <clears throat> would probably work great if it was a little wider and it had more of a squared off bottom but it's kind of rounded and I'm afraid that thing will tilt over when that cabbage gets very big so that's why I'm putting it out here in this one because I think it'll be all right there let's see where I can put my camera what we're doing maybe try to put it here in the little flower pots I'm going to put all that dirt that I dig out in this bucket. I don't want to waste the dirt because that's good dirt in there. In fact, I may just transfer what I've got in this other little bucket. This is my compost right here. I just got out the compost thing. I'll go ahead and dirt in that bucket because it's a little bigger. And it sure is, it's a good drainage down in here. <laughs> That's why I wanted to make sure I put a lot of, uh, I got toilet rolls, papers, paper towels, more paper rolls. <laughs> put that right in the bottom of the hole. Where I had that aloe vera. I had put a bunch of aloe vera in there for my compost. I don't want that down in there. Now I'm going to put my compost in there. dirt back in. And remember, we don't need it deep, so I'm just going to do that number. And we're going to come over here and get our little cabbage bottom. I might put more celery on this one as I get it because I don't trust it growing my cabbage. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> my camera fell. And I'm just going to go under the bottom of it so I don't damage any of the roots that it had on it to transplant it. Then I'm going to come right out here and put it in here.
because after all this, I want to give this the best chance in the world to grow. And I need just another scoop of this dirt. real moist and wet that was in the pot. And see, I'm not disturbing it because it hasn't done anything as far as, as far as putting down more roots or anything. When all the rainwater hits the uh, the little paper rolls and stuff in the bottom. It should help keep it moist under there. So it'll grow good. Just gonna put a little bit up around it. Because I'll water it and that's gonna kind of wash the dirt down to the roots of it. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Go get some compost tea. Of long roots down in here. This is just some of the dirt that come out of there. And the wood chips. <laughs> and it will settle down a little. I want to make sure those roots are covered. And just make sure you keep it watered. Okay. Basically all there is to it. Yeah, I think it'll do better out here. I got a little bit of dirt on top of it, but I want to make sure when it rains that those roots are covered up. And when it rains, it'll wash the dirt off of the cabbage. Yeah, I think it's going to work better in this pot because it's not going to tilt over no matter how big that cabbage gets. It's going to be right there. Because half of that pot is buried in the ground. So. And see all this growing right here? 
all up to the edge of the walk, that's wildflowers. They're going to put out, put out some pretty yellow and like burgundy colored flowers when they come up and bloom. It's going to be pretty. That's why I don't really want to mow. Because <laughs> I've got so many wildflowers coming up. You know, stuff like this, a lot of times I'll pull up if it's real close to the walk. Because uh, it does look kind of straggly. You know, like this. And then it, this is a form of a wildflower, too. And see, that's wildflowers. It's growing right out of the rock. <laughs> All of these are wildflowers. <laughs> of course, this isn't. This is a, a grass. So I can come out and break those off <laughs> or pull them up. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get anything to grow, and I said, Well, they'd have to dig to China to get the rocks and boulders up enough to put dirt in here to fix the yard you know full of nice grass but then I'd have to keep it watered constantly and I've heard people fussing about their water bills their water bills are so much because they have to keep their grass watered all the time and in Texas it's not easy to, to water grass it takes a lot of water Yes, yeah, so all that is a wildflower. They're not very big, but you can see they're really pretty when they're open. Look at those little pink flowers. That's the only reason I don't mow through here. I just let them bloom, let them seed out. They drop seeds. And I don't remember what this is called, but I wish it was in the yard and not up here in the rock garden. But, you know, I've just about given up. I've put cardboard, I've put everything down in here to keep it from growing. And it comes up through the edge, so... Not much of a way you can keep it down. So I've just about decided to let it grow. It's a... Uh, every bit of those coming up in those wood chips there is a form of wildflower or it's a gladiola that I've planted or something. So, I mean, I could leave it. I just really don't want them to take over my roses. And you, as you can see, it's taken over the pot. Because <laughs> all those flowers that close it drops seeds into the pot right along with grass seed I mean that's just nature when f plants grow they will drop seeds of some type and if they find moisture or dirt they will grow but yeah every bit of that is a wildflower <laughs> wildflowers daylilies these are daylilies coming up right here I've got had those all along the edge wild daffodils <laughs> This is the tree I had poison ivy on. You can still see part of it right there where I pulled it off. <laughs> Growing up there. That's where I pulled off that vine. <laughs> it was beautiful. Pretty and green. Thick. But I didn't know it was poison ivy <laughs> when I pulled it out. Little to my surprise, I was broke out from head to toe by the next day. 
And see, this is grass. My grass will grow in my flower beds, my rock gardens, but it don't want to grow in the yard. <laughs> and I don't blame it. If I was grass, I'd want to come up in a rock garden that had rich dirt and everything else in it versus coming up in a yard that doesn't have anything. But see, these are... That's my daylilies right there coming up. So I tried to keep the grass out of them. Which is not easy to do. Man, they put down some roots. They got something to grow in. They put down some good roots. And I guess it's better to have the wildflowers coming up in here than it is the grass <laughs> I guess <laughs> and what are those uh, I can't think of the name of them dandelions the wild dandelions that are supposed to be edible they come up in here too but at least it's not Bermuda grass I had that's one reason I put my rose bushes in pots here I had rose bushes here before and the, the Bermuda grass took over this rock garden so I put out poison to kill the Bermuda grass and then later I started filling it in with dirt and wood chips and every other kind of thing to fill it in potting mix you name it And then I said, well, I'm going to plant my roses this time in pots so the Bermuda grass hopefully doesn't get in there if there's any left in the dirt. So that's why that's planted like that. Look at there, I got tulips coming up right there. They like growing there because they get a lot of moisture that runs off from that pot when it's watered. So maybe I'll get some tulips this year. A lot of times by the time they come up and start to bloom, it gets too hot on them, so they don't really do anything. There goes my broccoli. Seems to like it down there. Looks like the fourth one coming up right there, because I remember I thought I put four seeds in there to give me four plants, if they all came up. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful peppermint? It makes a beautiful plant in a pot for your patio, and it smells great. <laughs> but like I said, don't plant peppermint anywhere that you don't want it to take over because it will take over. That's why I want mine in a pot because it puts down massive roots, and they go everywhere. They grow like crazy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I need to get that little bit of dirt, put it in my pot. blue bonnet started out here too but then like I said it got so hot it got so hot last summer the blue bonnets couldn't even do anything they didn't get enough moisture to really stay alive. 
But I'll put something else in this pot so that I don't worry about it turning the pot over. But you know, cabbage, even one cabbage is going to be massive. So... This is some good rich dirt here. I built this pot last year. Put tons of food scraps and compost and um, paper, cardboard, all that good stuff. And over time it's broken down and it's made some good soil. So that's good soil right there. Yeah, and I don't know what I'm going to do with some of the rest of these. And those are bearded iris. Those plants right between my rose bushes here. I had them around in the front rock garden. But they didn't do well. But when I moved them around here, and they get sun all afternoon, most of the day, They've done fantastic since they've, they've been back here. So that's probably where I'm going to leave them. Except for thinning them out. They're almost to the point where they need to be thinned out again. But, yeah, they're doing so much better here than they ever did on the other side of the yard. And I can't tell. Yeah, that's all. Bearded iris. And I don't know that I've seen bearded iris bulbs in the stores for sale since I bought those. Because my mom, she had tons of iris planted in her yard, in her flower beds. But none of them were bearded iris. And I t mentioned them to them one time when I went home that I had planted a bunch of bearded iris. And she said, well, what is a bearded iris? I said, well, it's an iris that grows basically like yours does, only the ones I plant they're either gold or purple and then they have like a brownish edge around the petals and that's why they call it a bearded iris because it looks like it's got a beard around it. And she said, well, I've never seen one of those. I said, well, I hadn't either until I came across those uh, bulbs that I bought that year. So. And I don't know what else I want to do out here today. I came out here and I pulled out those little struggling radishes. <laughs> I had two radishes. And I said, well, they're not enough to do anything with, so I'm just going to put them in the compost tea bucket. And I forgot to put them there. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm doing right now. I'm putting them, had put it in my compost tea bucket. But now I got the lid pinched. That little washer comes out of it, so... Yeah, you got to keep your buckets covered because if you don't, it causes really bad mosquitoes. And I've not seen signs of my potatoes coming up yet. There's something coming up there, but I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a potato leaf or what that is, but like I said, I'll leave it there. See what happens. All my peas are coming up. If they don't freeze. So I should have plenty of peas to climb up this trellis. I got to flip that around so I can see what I'm showing you. But yeah, all those peas are coming up. And I think that was either broccoli or Brussels sprouts or something. Maybe broccoli. But yeah, that'll be enough peas running up that trellis that I should get some peas this year anyway. Chinese cabbage. I hated that I gave these Chinese cabbage a bucket of it, their own. I should have put them in a tote. 
I could have put probably all of those plants in a tote. But there's our seed pots we planted. And I'm going to take these pots out of this tote so I can plant in the tote. As well as that one there. I'm going to be planting in all three of these totes when I get those seedlings out when they grow. And look at there, those potatoes. And I haven't got anything in those buckets out there yet. Um, like I said, I'm holding off planting until I know there's no danger of a freeze. But you know, I can't even say that because one year it snowed on Easter Sunday morning. We got up and the yard was covered in snow. My son called me and said, Mom, have you looked out your window yet? Or have you been up? I said, no. He said, look out your window. Oh my God, I looked out my window and everything was covered in snow. It was completely white. And he said, Mom, it does not snow on Easter. I said, well, evidently it will, because <laughs> it did. He said that he come out of his house, or he looked out the window and he thought it was hallucinating. He pinched himself to make sure he was awake. He still didn't believe what he saw, so he went to the front door because you could still see snow falling. And he thought at first it could be ash. Maybe there was a house burning close to him down their street. And uh, he opened the front door, stepped out. And he said, Mom, I had to touch the snow. I had to literally touch the snow to know that it was not ash from a house burning down. He said, I had to literally put my hands in it on the sidewalk to fully realize, yeah, that's real snow and it's Easter Sunday morning. So I don't put anything to chance in Texas because you never know. You never know what the weather's going to be. Never know. And my poor cactus, it didn't get to bloom this year. I think it got too hot on it in the, the summer. And then it got too cold on it this past winter. So it didn't put out one of those flowers like it did last year. Last year was the first year that my cactus bloomed. I'd never seen my uh, aloe vera cactus bloom before. But it put one long shoot right up the center of the stalk went up three or four feet and had a flower at the very top of it. And I said, how neat. That would be so pretty to have a bunch of aloe vera and have them all blooming at one time. Y'all like my shirt? I don't have any more of them. But I had a local artist draw the picture. It's an armadillo with wings. And on the shirt it says Texas State Bird. And I can't show you the back because <laughs> I've got the shirt on me. But the back of it has an old pickup truck going down a highway and it shows him hitting an armadillo. And everybody says out here, have you eaten armadillo? I said, no. They said, well, you need to go ride around and find armadillo on the highway, pick it up, take it home and eat it, cook it. I said, that's gross. He said, well, it's roadkill. <laughs> I said, I'll pass. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's all I had right at this moment. I just wanted to show you that that was a big mistake of putting my cactus in that little pot. No, my cactus, my cabbage, because I was afraid that it's going to get so big that it might tilt the pot over. So I decided to put it out there. I just have to remember to keep it watered when it's not raining because 
Cabbage likes well-drained soil, rich soil, composted soil, but it doesn't want to sit in the water either. The roots will rot. I mean, when you root it in a cup, that's fine, but you don't want to sit, have it sitting in a pot of dirt standing in water because it'll rot the, the cabbage. So with that, I'm going to go in. I'm going to fix me a cup of coffee. Maybe eat a bite of breakfast, and uh, I'll see you on my next one. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning so early. And um, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And y'all have a blessed day. I need subscribers. I still need about 800 more subscribers. I'm halfway on my viewing hours but because I've got close to 2,000 viewing hours already. But I do need hundreds more subscribers. So please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Y'all have a blessed day. And I'll see y'all my next one. Bye now.